When police uncover CCTV evidence in missing person cases, it can provide insight into the last moments before the victim vanished into thin air. In these unsolved cases, the final answers haven't yet been found. Number 5 On October 16, 2022, Lucinda Miller was caught on CCTV in southeast Melbourne. It was 11 a.m. and Lucinda was wrapped in a jacket, beanie, and scarf. Within an hour, she would vanish, leaving her loved ones confused and scared. Lucinda was 24 years old at the time of her unexplained disappearance. She had recently lost a lot of weight, and some news reports indicated that she may have had health problems when she became a missing person. Shortly after she was captured on CCTV, Lucinda ordered an Uber. 30 minutes later, the driver dropped her off in Neerham South. The location was 2.5 kilometers away from Lucinda's home and has been described as remote bushland. There was actually a trail in the area, which would have led Lucinda home. Lucinda never returned home though and hasn't been seen by her loved ones since. Lucinda's friends and family weren't immediately concerned. The day after Lucinda was caught on CCTV, a friend appealed for information online and requested anybody who saw the missing person to contact police and an ambulance. It was about a week later that this recent mystery began to make headlines. It emerged that Lucinda's phone had been turned off the day after she was last seen, and all calls were going straight to voicemail. The search for Lucinda focused on the area where she was last seen, but as the investigation into this missing person case progressed, it seemed as if she had left the area. The day after the CCTV footage, there was a sighting of Lucinda 8 kilometers away in Bonbon East. The news led police to expand their search, but there was still no sign of the missing person. Police described the sighting as credible, but there was no CCTV evidence to back it up. The case quickly went cold, though Lucinda's friends continued to search for her. Police stated they didn't believe another person was involved in Lucinda's unexplained disappearance. The Uber driver who last saw Lucinda wasn't suspected of any wrongdoing. It seemed as if Lucinda didn't want to be found, and if she didn't have any shelter, it was unlikely she would be found alive. But in November, there were two more sightings. On November 5th, someone matching Lucinda's description was spotted in Portland, southwest Victoria. Three days later, there was another sighting, this time in Colac. Lucinda is described as being 5'5", with a thin build and blonde hair. She was last seen wearing pink pants, a green jacket, a scarf, beanie, and a face mask. In the Colac sighting, she was carrying a black shopping cart. Anyone with information should contact police at 5622-7111. Number 4 It's been more than seven years since Ellen Wilson was last seen on CCTV, withdrawing money from an ATM. Her family are no closer to finding out what happened in this strange missing person case. The last time anybody saw Ellen was the evening of September 11, 2015. She had been at the Australian Hotel, a pub in Balina, Australia. Whether or not she had been drinking isn't known, but it's believed she left the bar in her silver Subaru station wagon. What happened after this is an unsolved mystery. Ellen was reported as a missing person when she failed to show up for a meeting the next day. The day of her scary disappearance, Ellen had spoken to this friend and they were set to discuss volunteering work. It was unlike Ellen to not show up. When nobody could get a hold of her, Ellen was reported as a missing person. Like many missing person cases, police turned to CCTV footage to help solve the case. Ellen had been captured on CCTV in Lismore, and reports state that this was the day after Ellen was last seen at the Australian Hotel. But still images from the CCTV video were released that were timestamped November 11. There were also reports of Ellen's car being seen in the area in the months following her disappearance, but none were ever corroborated. Neither Ellen nor her car have ever been found. Police found no evidence of foul play, but could not rule it out. The timeline in this case is extremely important. 
If the CCTV footage was from the day of her disappearance, it's likely Ellen vanished on her way home from the pub. The Australian hotel is very close to the Richmond River and to the shore, so it's possible an accident resulted in her ending up in the river. If the CCTV footage was the day after, something may have happened between Lismore and Bolina. Ellen is still registered as a missing person and her case is unsolved. Ellen is described as being of Caucasian appearance with light brown hair, blue eyes, and she wears glasses. Her car registration was CB76QX. Anyone with information that could help solve this unexplained disappearance should contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-333-000. Number 3. When Catherine Ackling Bryan failed to pick up her two daughters from school, her husband was immediately worried. It was only half an hour later that she was reported as a missing person. Her husband Michael soon discovered that she'd been acting strangely all day. Catherine took her two daughters to school that morning in a strange state. The younger girl was still in her pajamas, which had never happened before. The girl had been unwell the day before and had an accident in her clothes. The incident seemed to cause Catherine a lot of stress. She had intended to keep her daughter off school that day but changed her mind at the last moment. After dropping the children off, Catherine briefly returned home. At 10.30 a.m., she dropped off some items at the school, then took a bus to a shopping center. Catherine was seen on CCTV at St. Mary Village Center. She visited a Target and bought clothes for her daughters. She was again captured on CCTV at 12.17 p.m., leaving the shopping center. What happened next remains a mystery. There's no footage of Catherine after she left the shopping mall, but it's believed that she returned home. The new clothes were found at the house and Catherine had prepared a slow cooker meal. But by 3.30 p.m., she had vanished without a trace. The school called Michael, who thought Catherine must have overslept after a nap. He went to check, but the house was empty. Catherine had left behind her phone and purse, but her house keys were missing. Police immediately began the investigation into this missing person case. Over the next year, officials and Catherine's family made multiple appeals for information. No other CCTV footage was discovered, and no witnesses came forward. Police do not believe Catherine met with foul play. She had a history of mental health problems and was under a great deal of stress at the time of her disappearance. Her daughter's illness had upset her a lot, and the children reported that she had tears in her eyes during the walk. Catherine's family believes she's no longer alive. If this is the case, her body has never been found and Catherine's disappearance remains unsolved. Number 2 When Nigel Keeter was reported as a missing person in 2017, CCTV footage provided an important clue into what happened. But it wasn't enough to solve this unexplained mystery. Nigel was reported missing on November 3rd in Norwich, England. The day before, he had traveled to the city for a night out with friends. They were drinking, and one friend was worried Nigel might have to drive. The friend deflated the tires on Nigel's car, and it was later seized by police. Nigel stayed with the friend overnight, and the following morning, Nigel visited a local police station. Reports say that he had concerns about someone else in the house, and the same officer saw Nigel later on at 10 a.m. The details of these visits haven't been revealed, and it's not known what kind of concerns Nigel had or if he was in danger. Nigel was reported as a missing person later that day, and police investigating this missing person case turned to CCTV to try to figure out what had happened. No CCTV footage in Norwich provided any clues about this strange case, but there was some evidence further afield. On the morning of November 4th, Nigel was spotted on camera at a co-op store in Long Stratton, about 10 miles away. He had apparently walked there along a busy road. The CCTV footage was released to the public as police tried to gather more information in this mysterious case. Nigel looked calm in the footage as he purchased a bottle of water. He also took out about 100 euros from an ATM. Nigel continued walking south. There were reported sightings at Pullum Market. 
The last sighting of Nigel before he vanished into thin air was in the town of Dickelberg at 9.30 a.m. on November 4th. The timing indicates that he had walked all the way from Long Stratton. Searches along the A140, where Nigel was last seen, turned up no clues. It's not known where Nigel was walking to, and it would have taken days for him to walk home, and there were plenty of people who would have given him a ride if he needed one. Nigel left behind a teenage son and family that he was very close with. He had no known reason to want to disappear. Nigel is described as white, 5'11", and a large build. Anyone with information should contact the Norfolk police. Number 1 The disappearance of Letitia Zuba is an extremely strange and scary missing person case, which has been referred to as the French Mara Murray. CCTV evidence from the night of the unexplained disappearance may show Letitia left her home in France just before 8 p.m. on September 25, 2012. She lived in a studio attached to her parents' home. Letitia was heading to her grandmother's house in a town about 40 kilometers away. It wasn't uncommon for Letitia to stay the night with her grandmother, and she'd packed an overnight bag. When Letitia didn't show up, her grandmother grew concerned. She also couldn't get a hold of her via her cell phone. Meanwhile, police in Italy were responding to calls from motorists about a reckless driver. A black Volkswagen Polo was being driven the wrong way down a motorway. Police would later learn the car belonged to Letitia. Police tried to use a roadblock to stop the car, but it swerved past. The car stopped in the parking lot of a holiday resort. Police arrived at about 10.30 p.m. to find the car empty. Paperwork was strewn about, and Letitia's phone and purse were found in the car. Investigators found a bag of clothes left on the path to the beach. Checking CCTV videos, police found footage of someone in white running away from the car. The figure climbed the gate and fled in the direction of the beach. Police believe the figure captured on CCTV was Letitia, but the footage is blurred and details are difficult to make out. Searches of the area turned up no clues. Search and rescue teams believed it was unlikely Letitia was in the water. It was shallow and calm that night and her remains would have come to shore. One theory suggests Letitia headed in the direction of her grandmother's, but missed her turnoff. When she stopped to turn around, something happened. Letitia also had a history of paranoia and sometimes thought that she was being spied on. She had never done anything like this before, but it was suggested that she was now in hiding after a serious mental health issue. There are many other strange aspects of the missing person case, including a flip-flop belonging to Letitia, which was found a month and a half after the disappearance, and a strange witness which claimed to have seen a man in a suit hanging around on the path where Letitia was last seen. Ten years on, the case remains unsolved, and our family continue to search for answers. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.